but I just wanted to make kind of like a follow-up video to a little bit what I was talking about last time. So I shared a little bit in my last video about how we are trying beings just as God is and how we have a spirit, a soul, and a body. And I wanted to further talk about what it means when Jesus says in John uh, verse 3 through 5 where he says you must be born again. Um, born again of water and of spirit. We know that if we look at verse uh, John chapter 3 verse 6, 7, and 8 that it is actually talking about the water birth, the water part, the water birth is actually talking about the physical birth, not baptism. You can go and look that up yourself. I'm not going to read it for you. Go look it up. Um, but the spiritual birth is spirit because verse 6 says that which is flesh is flesh and that which is spirit is spirit. So I wanted to um, explain something. So we know that because of our sin, um, we are spiritually dead. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 3 through 5 says that before our belief in Christ, we are children of wrath. And we know that John chapter 1 verse 2 says to him that believe on him, that means the son of God, he gave them the right to be called children of God. This is very, very important. This is very critical. So we go to John, sorry, 1 John 3, 9. No one who is born of God will continue to sin because God's seed remains in them. They cannot go on sinning because they have been born of God. What does that mean? Right? Like, I can imagine a new believer reading this verse and going, what the heck, right? I, I have no idea, right? Okay, so we're, we're three-part beings. Let me read another verse to you, and this will make a little more, con this will make a little more sense. All right, 3 John 2, verse 1. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers. Okay, so 1 John 3, 9 is talking about because God's seed remains in him, a person who is born of God cannot continue in sin. Okay, when we are born again, our spirit is one spirit with God's spirit. The Holy Spirit takes residence up inside of us. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 1 Corinthians 6, 19 say that we are temples of the Holy Spirit, okay? The Holy Spirit comes and lives in here, okay? That is why demons cannot come into our spirit, man. They can attach to our flesh, they can attach to our soul, but they cannot get in our spirit, man, once we are born again, all right? Your spirit, man, is the seed of God. That is what 1 Corinthians 3, 9 is talking about. Now, sorry, 1 Corinthians, sorry, 1 John 3, 9 is talking about. 1 John 3, 9. I'm quoting so many verses. Um, 3 John 2, 1. Beloved, I pray you be in good health just as your spirit spirit, sorry, just as your soul prospers. Blah, blah, blah. <sighs> that is talking about your soul. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. That does mature. That does grow. So when Jesus talks about store up treasure in heaven, he's talking about growing in spiritual maturity. Um, there's also a verse, Ooh, I can't believe, I, I try to plan ahead, but the verse just came to my mind, it's in 1 Corinthians, I gotta, I gotta get this, um, um, okay, so, alright, 1 Corinthians 3.13, or, you know what, I'm gonna back up. Mm 
No. It's, uh, excuse me. All right. For other foundation, oh, sorry, 1 Corinthians 3, 11 through 15. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. <laughs> And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Okay, so that again, that's talking about reward, but he will be saved. Why? 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 Because the spirit man is born again. How precious is that? Like when you, when you really get that, when it clicks, and, and you can have someone explain this to you till they're blue in the face, but until the Lord reveals it to you, it's just like, you gotta have your light bulb moment. And sometimes we gotta have them over and over and over again. And sometimes we have to read things over and over again before we get that moment. But when you get it, you get it. It's just, there's there's nothing you can do. I, I, I it just makes so much sense when you understand the difference between your spirit, your soul, and your body. And I think um, that's why I really, really do recommend the, the, <laughs> the teaching spirit, soul, and body because it just, it's just going through all those different scriptures because there's a lot, I mean, uh, who, who, who typically just goes in their Bible study and spends time on Third John? I mean, not a lot of people do. And that's a really good nugget. And, and first John too, I mean, not a lot of people spend a lot of time on first John and first John, though it's a little book and it's kind of neglected. It's, it's got some really good stuff in there. So I just kind of wanted to share that. Uh, I hope that blesses y'all and see you next time. Bye.